Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thanks very much for attending our final insider series session. This one is all about how to finalize your core one registration and prepare for the orientation workshop that's going to be taking place on October 17th and 18th. It's great to see some familiar names here in our participant list. My name is Kathleen Brown. I'm one of the three student recruitment advisors here with the CPA Atlantic School of Business who have all been alternating as your hosts throughout this series. I hope that you found these episodes to be helpful and that you're feeling prepared and excited to get started in the CPA PEP next month. Uh, as like the previous sessions, today's session will be recorded. So I'm going to address all of your questions at the end, but you can feel free to go ahead and type the questions into the chat box as you think of them or as they arrive throughout the presentation. I'll just hold off and address them all at the end. I will ask that you all please keep your mics on mute during the session to reduce the background noise for others. And I'll also let you know that I've got uh, my colleagues on the line with me, my fellow student recruitment advisors, and John Thomas is going to be able to answer any questions in French. So feel free to pose those in French in the chat box as well. Wonderful. Well, to keep us all on track this morning, let's get things going. So as I said, we're going to go through these steps to get yourself registered and prepared for core one. And I know that everyone on the line here is at a bit different stages of the process. Some of you have already registered. Some are waiting for your evaluation. Some have completed an evaluation but haven't yet registered. So let's start with the very first step for folks, which is to submit your core one registration. So if you haven't already done this, this is the first step to register for core one after your eligibility is confirmed. And you really want to do your best to submit your core one registration prior to the registration deadline of September 18th. So for those of you who just wrote your final prep exam, I know that your grades aren't released until September 16th, but we'd still like you to go ahead and submit your core one registration now, even though those final marks aren't released yet. So for anyone who's new to the CPA Atlantic School of Business and you've recently got your eligibility assessment results back, your first step is to create an account through the self-serve portal. You can access our self-serve portal through our website, cpaatlantic.ca. You'll see the link to the self-serve portal right there in the header. You're going to click on the Create My Account button if it's your first time using the portal, and you're going to set up an account using your seven-digit CPA ID and your email address. Keep in mind that this registration portal is where you're going to go back to for all of your further course registrations throughout the process. Those of you who were active prep students with us, you don't need to create an account. You already have one. You simply log into the same account that you've been using to register for your prep courses to register for your first PEP module. So within the registration portal, there's going to be three pages that you need to go through. On the first page, you're going to verify the contact information, and that should be up to date based on what you provided to us on the eligibility request form. You're going to go through the second page of the registration, which is the declarations and attestations that you have to complete. And on the third and final page is where you actually register for the core one module. You're going to see a couple of different drop down menus there. So from the program drop down menu, you're going to select the CPA PEP. Uh, you're going to select core one from the course drop down menu and fall from the semester drop down menu. When you complete this registration through the self serve portal, you're going to go ahead and immediately get your invoice for the core one module fee. This one is invoiced to you right away after you complete the registration. You are also going to get a second invoice from our finance department for your one-time program licensing fee and your first year of annual candidate dues. And this one comes to you once your registration is processed by the registration coordinator. So it's not immediate like that core one module fee invoice is. So this process has already begun for those of you who have submitted a registration. Anyone who submitted the registration before August 26 should already have had their registration processed and should have that program licensing fee and annual candidate dues invoice. Do go ahead and chunk your check your junk mail if you know that you submitted your registration before August 26 and you don't remember having received that invoice yet. For anyone who proceeds with submitting their core one registration after this, we're going to do our best to get this invoice to you within a couple of business days. This is quite important, folks. I do want you to please ensure that payment is received for 
both of these invoices, your core one module fee and the invoice for your licensing fee and annual candidate dues, no later than two weeks prior to the start date to allow for receipt and processing time. So in other words, plan to submit your payment by Friday, October 2nd. The, ne the next step that you're gonna have to complete to get you ready and, and get your registration prepared for the program is some contracts that you'll need to sign. The first one applies only to those contacts in Nova Scotia. So for those of you who are candidates here residing in Nova Scotia, you're gonna need to complete the application for registration form that I send out as part of your eligibility assessment follow-up. If you can't find this form or don't, don't have a copy of the email with it attached, go ahead and email me and I'll make sure you get it. And so anyone in Nova Scotia, you wanna submit this application for registration form as soon as you've submitted your online core one registration and do your best and make sure to remember to include a witness on that form. Okay. We do need someone to witness your signature there. It's absolutely fine if they're a family member or someone in your household. Now all candidates, regardless of where you're living are going to receive the CPA Canada training contract and the private career college contract from our manager of student services. That's Leslie Murphy shortly after the registration deadline okay these have not been sent out to you yet so don't worry if you haven't received them yet these will be coming in late september to you you're going to have to return both of these contracts in full including the appendices otherwise they will not be accepted and so don't just submit back the signed page to leslie make sure you submit back the full contracts we're going to be sending these out through DocuSign for this intake, so this should make it easier on folks. You don't need to worry about printing them off, scanning them back. Um, make sure that you have these signed contracts returned to Leslie no later than one week prior to the course start date. So you want to plan to have your contracts submitted by Friday, October 9th. And the reason that I'm really honing in on these deadlines for you, because approximately one week before Core 1 starts, those who have submitted their payment as well as the required documents are going to receive an email with instructions for setting up your online study portal and outlining all the pre-work that you need to do to get ready for your orientation workshop, okay? So it is really important to meet those deadlines for the payment and contract so you have time to go through all of this information to prepare for core one. The first thing you're gonna get is access to Desire to Learn, the study portal. Uh, and within Desire to Learn, you're gonna see a couple different modules available to you. There's gonna be the Intro to PEP module, you're going to see the core one module you're going to see a practical experience orientation module and as well you're going to notice some additional free informational modules from cpa canada so those cover content such as um, adapting to the canadian and accounting workplace culturally inclusive exams those ones are bonus material from cpa canada Within each of these, you do want to take some time to review these modules in D2L and review the different uh, material that's available to you. Most especially some of the core one module material that's available in the content section there. One of the other deliverables that you need to complete as you prepare for the orientation workshop is getting yourself set up in the practical experience reporting tool or what we call PERT which has to be done prior to the orientation workshop, even if you are currently unemployed. So first you're gonna to need to complete the PERT orientation quiz, which is available through D2L. So that's within that practical experience module, orientation module in D2L. Once you've submitted this orientation quiz, you're gonna be able to log into PERT about 24 hours after the orientation quiz is complete. So then within PERT, you need to set up your practical experience profile. And there are gonna be step-by-step -step guides available to you on the right-hand side of the page as soon as you log in. So you can follow those guides to help you set up your initial PERT profile based on your circumstances. If you're unemployed, if you're working at a PPR, or if you're reporting to us through experience verification. So you're gonna review all your material in D2L. You're gonna get yourself sorted out with the practical experience by completing the quiz and setting up your PERT profile. And then you're going to prepare for the workshop. There's some 
pre-orientation workshop preparation that you need to take care of. And so I do want you all to plan to be available and set some time aside to work through this material in the week leading up to core one orientation workshop. I know many of you probably have it on your calendars that that workshop's getting going on October 17th. This is to let you know and be prepared to set aside some time leading up to that so you're prepared for the workshop. You're going to be sent a uh, pre-workshop checklist that will be available in D2L before the orientation workshop begins on October 17th. And there's quite a bit on that checklist, so that's why I want you to be prepared to set aside some time throughout the week because you're going to need to work through all of the items on that checklist. This is going to um, include that you need to review and read all of the CPA Canada resources. So you're going to see the candidate guide, the competency map, and there's some CPA way videos that you're going to need to review. All of this pre-orientation material can be found in the content section of the core one module in D2L there. Another important thing to set up as you prepare to start uh, the orientation workshop is making sure that you have access to NOSHA, which is the CPA handbook in D2L. Another item that you're going to see on that checklist for preparing for the orientation workshop is completing a DISC personality profile. You're going to be emailed an automatic link to access it, and sometimes these are filtered out as junk mail, so you do want to make sure that you check your spam and junk folder if you didn't receive it. It's going to take you approximately 15 minutes to fill in, uh, but it is required and it's going to be used as both part of the orientation workshop and in assignments throughout the program. So you want to make sure you complete your DISC profile assessment as well. One more item that you may need to take care of in terms of workshop prep is there very likely may be a case that you're expected to read as well to prepare for the orientation workshop. If so, that will be available in the Core 1 D2L module and that will be an item on your workshop checklist as well. So I know I understand that's quite a bit to take in and be prepared for. So let's go over all of these important dates once more so that you're all feeling ready and then we'll go through your questions. I want to make sure you all do your best to submit your core one registration before the deadline of September 18th. Those of you on the call who have just completed your final prep courses, I'm sure you're anxiously awaiting. You probably already know that those grades will be released on the 16th, but you can still go ahead and submit your Core 1 registration now so that we can start processing things for you. You want to all remember to submit your payment for both invoices by October 2nd and make sure those contracts are back to us a week later on October 9th because for that week of October 12th, you're going to be planning to complete the orientation pre-work. And you're all going to want to have the time set aside to be available for the orientation workshop on the 17th and 18th of October. All right, folks, I know by now you know all of our contact information. You've all been in touch with your student recruitment advisor, but if you've got any questions about this, if you need any help going into anything further, your student recruitment advisors are most certainly here to support you. Those of you here in Nova Scotia and any international inquiries can reach out to myself for our candidates who will be studying in New Brunswick PEI and any French inquiries, please reach out to my colleague John Thomas and our candidates in Newfoundland and Labrador as well as Bermuda know you can reach out to Amy Burridge. I hope that helps give you kind of a bit of an overview of what your next month and a bit is going to look like here as you prepare for core one and some of the things you'll need to take care of there leading up to the workshop. But I would love to open things up to questions for you now. Please do go ahead and pose those to me in the chat box. Uh, go ahead and put them in English or French, whichever is your preference, and we'll take care of answering any additional questions that you have here. Hi, Pervy, I see a question here about whether the orientation workshop will be in person or virtual. It will certainly be virtual. We're not doing the in-person workshops just yet due to the physical distancing requirements. Whether or not it will be virtual live or asynchronous is a decision that will be made by the profession here in the coming weeks. So although I don't yet know if it will be live virtual or asynchronous virtual, it will be virtual delivery. 
I see another question here from Ali. Just wondering if the core one final exam in December will be remote or in person. Ali, again, that's a decision that the profession is taking one module at a time here as we reanalyze the situations regarding COVID in each of the provinces, right? So as of right now, the exams are being delivered virtually. I think there's a very good chance that will still be the case in December, but that's something the professional will announce closer to and um, let you know through D2L, through the notifications there, how your exam will be delivered. Either way, you still want to prepare for the set exam date that it's um, scheduled for, because the exam, regardless of its in-person or virtual, is still going to be set at a specific time. So you want to make sure you're available during that time and you have it set aside for your exam. Oh, I'm going to ask for some support from my colleague, John, here. I see we've got a French question in the chat box, John. Uh, bonjour, Georges. Merci pour votre question. Puis, ici, il y a d'autres francophones en ligne. Uh, Est-ce que les cours doivent être réalisés dans un ordre précis? Donc, la réponse, c'est oui. Uh, il faut suivre l'ordre des cours, uh, commençant avec le, le commun 1, suivant par le commun 2. Après ça, vous avez les, uh, les cours à l'option. Uh, suivi par les deux autres cours et l'examen final commun. Uh, puis je vais juste traduire ça en anglais parce que ça se peut que c'est pertinent aussi pour les autres uh, sous l'appel. Uh, so George's question is, are the courses, do the courses need to be completed in order? So the answer is yes, uh, beginning with core one, core two, then your electives followed by the capstones and the common final exam. So yes, they do follow a specific order. Thank you, John. All right, I see a question here from Patrick. Is there anywhere on the website or on D2L where we can confirm that the contracts and documents have been submitted and approved? Oh, Patrick, that's a great question. So this is our, uh, we're just getting things going with DocuSign. This will be the first time that we're using it. So I will be honest with you, Patrick. I'm not entirely sure of the f process. If you get a confirmation email once those are submitted, I can tell you that um, they haven't even been set out yet. The contracts aren't quite finalized yet. So obviously there's no expectation that you would have submitted them and been and they have been approved. Typically, once Leslie Murphy receives your signed contracts back, they're added to your file. So you're always welcome to follow up with one of your student recruitment advisors. We can check your file for you if you want to confirm receipt. If there isn't uh, some sort of auto mechanism in place to confirm receipt of those once they're received. Hi, Pervy. Yes, the exam result date is September 16th, which I believe is the date that's currently up there on the website. I do uh, think that before the exams were staggered for that final prep schedule, it was an earlier exam release date of September 14th, but the date is September 16th now. And you'll find your final prep grades available to you in Desire to Learn under the Grades tab when they're released on the 16th. Hi, Morgan. Yeah, that's a great question. Morgan's just asked here in the chat if there's a place to access the prior recordings of the Insider Series. And you betcha, yeah, that's the exact reason why we've recorded all of these. We recognize not everyone's available to attend them while we're doing them. So you certainly can go back and review some of the previous ones if you'd like to. Those are available on our website. So it's cpaatlantic.ca. If you scroll down to the bottom of the website there, you'll see the calendar of events. When you click onto the calendar of events, you'll see the listing of all of our previous Insider Series, the topics that they covered, and then there's a link to each of those right there. Oh, isn't that wonderful? One of my colleagues has put the link right in the chat box for you. So within that calendar of events, you'll see the link to the YouTube for each of the prior recordings. If there's certain ones that are of most interest to you, depending on your circumstances, you're welcome to go back and view those all. John, I'll ask you once again for your support here. Uh, we've got another question in French in the chat box. Donc, la question vient de Georges. Uh, selon le calendrier de cours, les cours au choix 
ne sont pas disponibles au printemps 2021. Devrions-nous faire le synthèse puis revenir à ces cours à la session suivante? Donc, euh, si le cours n'est pas affiché, euh, ça, ça veut dire que ce n'est pas offert. Donc, euh, il faut attendre un temps qui, euh, où le cours est, sera offert. Um, donc, uh, I'm just going to translate. So his question is, if he's not, if we're not seeing the course on the course calendar, uh, should we just wait until the next offering of that course? So the answer is yes. Uh, so if the course is not listed there, uh, there are periods during the CPA PEP where you will have to take a break just because the course is not op uh, offered or um, it's possible that uh, another course will be offered. So it's, it's wise to start planning your, your CPA pathway now. And again, you can always reach out to your student recruitment advisor that can help you plan this schedule. Donc, uh, si vous avez uh, de plus de questions sur le parcours uh, CPA, sur votre cheminement, vous pouvez toujours uh, contacter votre, CP, votre uh, uh, conseiller uh, CPA qui pourrait donner plus d'informations sur votre cheminement CPA. That's a great point, John. So as many of you may have already noticed on the sample pass that we've got on our website, everyone here on the call who's planning to start in October, there isn't actually a path that allows you to take all six modules back to back. So with the October intake, the fall intake of core one, the fastest path available through the CPA PEP is 21 months. So at the very least, you will need to take one break throughout your studies as you are going to encounter a semester there uh, where you need to take a break. A little, most of the candidates who start in October choose to take two breaks throughout their studies, one each year, and plan to write the common final exam in two years. Perfect. So I see another question here about if we register for the core one now before the prep course marks are released, what is the procedure to change the registration? So that's not actually something you need to worry about. Our registration coordinator will do that. And so that's why it's great if you go ahead and submit your core one registration now, even though your exam receipts results aren't released yet. That way, once the results are all released and uploaded, the registration coordinator is going to go through all of the core one registrations. If you were unsuccessful in your final prep exam, you will automatically be withdrawn for core one. You don't have to worry about that. We'll automatically take you out if you're not eligible to start the program. In that case, it would be on you to use the self-serve portal to register for a rewrite or another attempt at your final prep course. If you were successful on your prep exam and you've already f submitted your core one registration, then at that time, the registration coordinator can process your core one registration, can get you your invoice for your candidate dues and licensing fee, and we can move through the process of getting you all ready to go in the program. My pleasure. All right, folks, if there's any more questions, please do feel free to pose them to me in the chat box or follow up with your student recruitment advisor one on one if you'd like to have a call to go through any of this in more detail to talk about your circumstances or to help you plot out your path through the CPA PET modules.